AMD and Intel release new processors pretty much every year now. Kind of like Apple with new phones. I don't know about you, but I feel like we've stagnated and we really aren't going anywhere. Actually, it's the exact opposite. We have come so far that even the budget stuff is now amazing. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny. Welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. When I use the phrase best CPU, I don't just mean top performance. The Ryzen 5 5600 is from AMD's Zen 3 CPU architecture, codenamed Vermeer. So it's actually last generation now since the new Zen 4 CPUs just released. In case you didn't already know, the specs of this CPU are, there are six cores and 12 threads with a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz. It's built on TSMC seven nanometer process and it has 32 megabytes of L3 cache. You can also find AMD's very own Wraith Stealth CPU cooler included in the box. Currently, this CPU can be found over on Amazon or Newegg for 160 USD. It's supported by the AM4 socket from B350 all the way up to X570, which covers from about 2017 to 2022. This CPU released in April of 2022, so it's only a few months old right now. Let me explain to you why I picked up this processor and why I think it's AMD's best CPU right now. The 5600 slots in at a great price, has solid gaming performance, which you'll see in a second, and it has all the best AMD CPU features, like PCI 4.0 connectivity and a large memory cache. Cache plays a huge role in improving the overall performance output, and it's one of the main reasons why the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D has a significant performance improvement over the rest of the 5000 series lineup. Now I wanna look at the performance in games, as I said, with the 5600 versus a couple other CPUs that I have. I threw the 5600 into my makeshift AMD test bench I built and paired it with an ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3070. I also have a Corsair H115i Pro liquid cooler controlling temps. I'll leave a build list below with all the parts used. I decided to use a wide variety of CPUs against the 5600 and they are the Ryzen 9 3950X, the Intel i5-12600K, and the i5-10600K from Intel as well. All games were run at 1080p on max settings, and the results are a three-run average. The first game up was Apex Legends. The 5600 came in at 224.3 FPS average, while the 12600K beat it at 232.4. The 5600 did achieve a win against the 3950X, where it got 219.7, and the 10600K pulled ahead at 230.1. For Apex Legends, it was right in the middle, it didn't fall behind, it didn't shoot ahead. However, all of these CPUs are within a couple FPS of each other, so you honestly wouldn't notice anyways. The next game tested was Forza Horizon 5. The 5600 achieved 96.8 FPS average, while the 3950X achieved 96.3, the 12600K got 100.6, and the 10600K got 97.1. As you can see, we're starting to run into a bottleneck from the GPU here. I am running these on max settings because I just wanted to prove 1080p max settings, the GPU is still your limiting factor. So you could go with something as cheap as a 5600 for 160 bucks versus spending two, three, four hundred dollars on a CPU and getting the exact same frame rate. Continuing on, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was the next title tested. This was on the highest settings at 1080p. I got 151 FPS average for the 5600 and 126.5 FPS average for the 3950X. The 3950X architecture kind of shows its age a little bit. Now the Intel CPUs did much better with 155 FPS average for the 12600K and 133.1 for the 10600K. The final game tested was Cyberpunk 2077 on ultra settings. The 5600 achieved 90.9 .9 FPS average, while the 3950X got 84.8, .8, and the 12600K got 92.1 .1 FPS average. The 10600K did achieve 94.1 .1 FPS average, which was actually very impressive and the highest result in this test. The higher FPS average was really within variance on Cyberpunk, and honestly, as you see in most of those tests, the difference between the CPUs really was negligible. Even in Apex Legends, it was only about a 10 FPS difference for the CPUs at 200 and something FPS. So I just wanted to be able to prove to you in the performance benchmarks 
The GPU is your bottleneck, even at 1080p max settings, if you're gonna use something like a 3070 or below. Now, if you're using a 3090 or a 6900 XT or something, obviously that's gonna change your bottleneck a little bit. I did try Ryzen's one-stop overclocking. They have something called Ryzen Master. I don't know if you know about it or not. It's something new to me that I really haven't done a lot of playing around with. It was a very simple process. All I had to do was click the button that said Auto OC. It gave me 100 megahertz overclock on my CPU, but it honestly made no difference. The gaming performance was the exact same that the 5600 got without the overclock. So the CPU doesn't even matter in the games that I tested. Now you may be playing different games like Rainbow Six Siege or CSGO where you get super high frame rates and the resolution doesn't look that good. You know, the quality of the game really isn't that good, but you get really high FPS. That might matter for the CPU side of things. If you're gonna be playing a competitive title like that, maybe even Rocket League, you might see an increase in the CPU performance. But at the games I tested and being realistic, just popping it in, playing the games, you wouldn't see a difference at all. One thing I wanna talk about real quick, AMD came out with their new Ryzen 7000 series processors. So that makes these 5000 series processors obsolete, right? Wrong. You could use this CPU to upgrade one of your older systems. If you have an AM4 system with like a Ryzen 2000 series or Ryzen 3000 series, you could pop the 5600 in there and get a little performance boost over older generation CPUs. And all you have to do is upgrade your BIOS and the CPU works right away out of the box. You just pop it into your motherboard and you'll be fine. The beauty of building a Ryzen 5 5600 system is upgradability. You could spend half as much money, even less than that, on an AM4 system and upgrade it over time and still get great performance versus building with the new AM5 system. Plus that gives you the option to drop in the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and give yourself an awesome gaming performance boost at the same cost that you initially started your system with your 5600. I've seen the 5800X 3D go as low as $399 recently. So if you can pick it up for less than $400, you might have yourself a really winning gaming computer for cheap. So what are my thoughts on the 5600? I think this thing is great value. When used strictly for gaming, this is all you need. The RTX 3070 at 1080p on max settings across a wide range of CPUs didn't really show much of a difference between the cheapest one and the most expensive one. I would suggest you save the money on the CPU, pick up the 5600 if you're thinking about building an AMD system, and just put that money towards a more high-end GPU, like an RTX 3070, which will net you higher FPS in all your gaming titles anyways. $160 for top tier gaming performance and enough cores and threads for all your daily tasks? That sounds like a win to me. If you stuck around this long, I thank you. And I've got some other videos I did like this one here that shows you about how if you pair an older CPU with a newer GPU, how can that affect performance? So feel free to check that one out next. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next video. Even if I changed up Everything except my name We will still be Friday Cause I am sick